If you have your Bibles, turn with us to the book of John, chapter 3, verse 16. <laughs> Is that a new one or anybody here? <laughs> Amen. Let me, I'll read this. <laughs> Y'all there? Should be able to quote this one actually. But. For God so loved the world. <laughs> God did this. That he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believeth in him. Should not perish but have everlasting life. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Amen. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already. Because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. Anybody know his name? Jesus. Okay, good. I'm glad you're with me now. And this is the condemnation. This is the condemnation. <laughs> that light has come into the world. And men love darkness rather than light. Because their deeds were evil. Everyone that doeth evil hateth the light. Neither cometh to the light. Least his deeds should be reproved. He, but he that doeth truth cometh to the light. That his deeds may be made manifested that they are wrought in God. Amen. Would you pray with me, please? Father God in heaven, humbly, humbly, we come before an almighty God this night. Thank you for the words that have already been spoken. Thank you for the songs that have been sung. Thank you for each, each soul that is here tonight. There is nothing hid from you, Lord. Not one thing. You know every person here, you know everything we're going through and each difficulties and things that are happening in each one of their lives. God, we just ask you, Lord God, to speak in a mighty way. Lord God, through your preached word tonight. God, let us get out of the way, Lord, and just use these lips of clay for your glory. And all praise and glory to you, Lord, whatever is done here tonight, the remainder of this service. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 See, a lot of people don't understand what love really looks like. Because people, people all over the world saying, because evil goes on, they want to blame God for it. And, and God does have the power to wipe all evil out of the, all evil of the world out if he wants to. He can do that, can't he? He can do that. But we live in a fallen world. And he has to let us have a choice. I mean, what is life without choice? Would it really be living or you'd be robots? Right? Programmed to do whatever God wanted you to do. You've got to have a choice. God's got to give a person a free will to choose. And God has done his part. He has... And if you read up above this, you're going to find that just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, yeah. amen, so shall the Son of Man be. See, see, God hasn't removed evil out of the world. He will one day. He'll judge all evil and wickedness. But what he has done is this. He made a way of escape. <laughs> he made a cure for it. 
Amen. And that way is what I just read to you. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Amen. And his name is Jesus. Amen. Amen. Did, he, did he bring forgiveness upon anybody here? Yeah. Does it work? Yeah. Amen. He was lifted up. Amen. Wasn't he lifted up? Yeah. Amen. On a hill called Calvary, he's lifted up. Amen. That there he died for the sins of the world. Praise God. Anybody that would come to him in faith believing. Amen. He's able to wash their sins away and make them whole. Praise God. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> God did that. Because he loves us. Amen. See, I was guilty. Guilty of sin. I'd sinned toward God. I'd sinned against God's commandments. He wrote them down. He gave them to us. It's, it's called the Mosaic Law. Amen. It's right there. It was given to us to show us that we're all sinners. And we come short. It couldn't cure sin. It couldn't take away sin, but it pointed it out. <laughs> Just like a judge or a jury stands up, a man, and you're tried, and they say, until you, all the evidence weighs against you. A man, they see you on camera, a man, whatever, and they said, yeah, guilty. <laughs> guilty. And it's just like, you know, I, I'm guilty of some kind of crime or act. And, and you know, look, we got Big Dave and we got Little Dave somewhere. I don't know where he's at. Amen. And I've got a guilty verdict against me. And Big Dave says, Little Dave would take your place. And my sentence is death. I mean, is he going to do that? No. There's not a parent hardly in the world who will hardly do that. I mean, if you've got children, you love them. You, you don't want to see them perish. Look what God did. He said, every one of you is guilty. But here's my son. Thank you, Lord. Here's my son. And he's going to take your place. Yeah. Thank you. He's going to take your guilt. He's going to take your sin. He's going to take your punishment. <laughs> upon himself. So that you don't have to bear it. But the one requirement is. You've got to come to him in faith believing. You've got to believe. Only way is through him. And he is able to cleanse you from all unrighteousness, isn't he? He's able to do that. Amen. And as we read on down here, and he says, you will receive everlasting life. But here, here's the, here he says the condemnation. So see, if you read this, and this is the condemnation that light has come into the world. Light and darkness represents something here. He's not talking about just light or just darkness. They represent something, amen. And if you read on down, it tells you what it represents, amen, in 21. But he that doeth truth cometh to the light. Amen, the truth, amen, the light is the truth. So let's read this again. I ain't trying to mix up the word, but I want you to see this. And this is the condemnation that truth is coming to the world. Truth is coming to the world. And men love lies, darkness, right? They love lies <laughs> rather than truth because their deeds are evil. <laughs> Amen. I mean, why in the world would anybody, I mean, Jesus come and he proclaimed the truth to a lost and dying world. And he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father except by me. That's the truth. Amen. And he said, I go away to prepare your place. For in my father's house are many mansions. Yeah. Amen. He said, I'm, I'll come back and receive you to myself. Yeah. But he also said, there's a place. Yeah. Amen. In the book of Luke, he said, the rich man died. Yeah. 
and lifted his eyes in hell. And that's the truth. <laughs> Amen. These truths are all through the Word of God. They're there. What, what Brock was already preaching at you a little bit is the truth. <laughs> it's the truth, see? But see, people want to hide in their lies and the world is trying to hide in their lies and say, I'm all right, you're all right. You're all right, we're all right. You know? And thank God that God is long-suffering. <laughs> Amen, because he had to be with me. Oh yeah, I've been there. Amen, I've been in bitterness. Yeah, and it took him, took him a while to beat it out of me, but he finally did, thank God. Amen, he'll do it, praise God. Why? Because God loves you. Hey, look at this. In Proverbs 13, 24, it says, He that spareth his rod hateth his son. But he that, that loveth him chasteneth him betimes, quickly. God, God's talking about this, talking about us as humans doing this. And if humans do this, what about God? Hey, man, he ain't going to spare his rod. <laughs> You know why? Because he does love us. He's going to chasten us, amen. Because he loves us. See, and we think that, that okay, yeah, man, that parents whipping the tar of their child. <laughs> they hate them. No, they love them. They don't want them to grow up to be a thief. They don't want them to grow up to be a murderer. Amen, or adulterer. Or all these things. So they... they I, I got anybody get spanking when you was little? Hey Amen. Did you deserve it? <laughs> Deserved it, did it? Did it kill you? Hey <laughs> Amen. Taught you a lesson, didn't it? Hey Amen. It's still in the Word of God today. It still works. I know it's not politically correct anymore, but it still works. I believe it myself. Hey Amen. And God does also, and I'm glad He does. I'm glad that he chastens us still. Yeah. Amen. There was a time in Jerusalem. I, I got scripture, but I'm just going to tell you what it is. Amen. And Jeremiah, the weeping prophet, man, he cried and he cried and cried. And he preached and he preached and he preached for the people to repent, for the children of Israel to turn from their ways. And they didn't. So he brought this prophecy that they would be, king of Babylon was going to come and they was going to be in captivity for how many years, church? Seventy years. Seventy years, right? And then, oh, let me read this part of it. Seventy years. Did God do that? What did he do that for? Because he hated Israel? No, he loved them. He wanted to fix them from their idol worship. And he wanted to fix them. And he did fix them. <laughs> you read. They didn't do no idol worship after they come back. Amen. I, I'm telling you, you all been through some stuff. You didn't want to let go of it, did you? But what did God do in your life? Look back at you. Just think about it. What did he do in your life? I mean, did he, did he send you roses and candy and, oh, please, please, please straighten up, will you? Did he, did he pamper you? And man, I mean, he, he sent the word to you. I know that. And the preacher preached and the singer sung and testified. Your friends may have even told you. Hey man, and all this, but you still wouldn't, you still wouldn't let go of it, would you? Then what happened? He got you, didn't he? <laughs> he got your attention, didn't he? Hey Amen. He'll do it. Praise God. Hey Amen. Look here. After the 70 years, Daniel comes to place in chapter 9. Hey, let, me, let me read you this. It comes to place. And what Daniel is doing here in chapter 9, he, he realizes and he remembers the prophecy of Jeremiah. He says that here in the first, in the first uh, two verses here. And he, realize, he realizes that 70 years is, is, about, is being accomplished. Okay? So he begins to confess we have sinned. In verse 5, he says, We have sinned and have committed iniquity and have done wickedly and have rebelled even by departing 
from the precepts and from thy judgments. Neither have we hearkened unto the servants, the prophets, which speak in the name of our kings, uh, our princes, and our fathers. They spoke to them and to all the people of the land. So see, he, he's, he's repenting. And that's what we, he was talking about earlier. Amen. When God is showing you something, that's what we need to do is repent. And not have to go through that God dragging us through the captivity, amen, and the hardships and, and even maybe even flat on our back sometimes to get our attention, amen, to get us to a place of repentance when God has showed us, praise God, there's something we need to repent of, amen, and, and confess to Him and to continue on and live because we do serve a good, good God, amen, and He loves us and He wants to see us to come to this place just like He wanted to see Israel to come to this place. Amen. But he goes on here in verse 7. He says, O Lord, righteous belongeth unto thee, but unto us uh, con confession, confusion of face. Of face. Confusion of face. He says again, verse 8. He said, O Lord, to us belongeth confusion of face. Of face. Amen. Is there any confusion in the world today? Is people confused? Is young people confused? You know what he said he's going to do over in the New Testament? He said he'd send a strong delusion among the people. People are confused. They're, delu they're delusion. You know why? Because just like, Jer just like Daniel says, because they had departed from God. And they can't, they're not thinking right. Their mind's not right. Their mind's no longer sharp. They can't even make a television show anymore like Andy Griffith because their mind isn't sharp. Amen. They, they don't know how to make comedy because their mind is not sharp. It's polluted. And all the things that they can make as comedy, a man is sick, a man and perverted and twisted. A man, that's the only way they can do it. A man, because their mind is not sharp. A man, like it was way back, praise God, when people really served the Lord and was actually praising him and, and believed in God. There was a nation that believed in God, praise God. A nation that even, a man, respected to the Sabbath and, and then even watched over that, amen. A nation that gathered together in the house of God, amen, on Sunday morning, Sunday night and Wednesday, praise God, amen, and even revivals, praise God. A nation that read the word of God, a nation that believed, a nation that would go down on their knees in prayer, amen, when we went to war, praise God, and mommies and daddies being praying for sons and daughters when they went off to war, praise God, amen, that kind of nation, praise God. Amen. But this nation now, their mind is twisted. It's sick. Amen. We live in a sick, twisted nation. Amen. Where young people believe they're dogs and cats. Amen. And men don't even know that they're men anymore. And women don't know that they're women anymore. Praise God. Tell me what not in a sick, twisted nation. Amen. And this delusion of faith. And my face is upon this nation. Hmm. But even in the condition that a lot of people's minds and hearts are in, God is still love. Amen. God is still love. And God is still long suffering. Amen. It's not God's will that any should perish, but all come to repentance. Amen. He is long suffering. Amen. God is light. And in him there is no shadow of turning of darkness. No darkness. There's no lie. He's all truth. So if you want to hear the truth about yourself, ask God. Don't ask me. I don't know you. <laughs> I don't know everything in your life. But I know somebody does. God knows everything about you. He knows when you get up, and He knows you all through the day. He even knows, the Bible says, He even knows the, your thoughts before you think them. Yeah. Amen, yeah. He hears every out of word. But He still 
loves you. He commendeth his love toward us. While we were yet sinners. <laughs> While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us on a cross. Amen. While we were yet sinners, he died. I'm telling you, this. see, people don't understand love. They think love is just hugging somebody, kiss them on the cheek, oh, I give you everything you want. That's not love. Love is correcting a child. Love is loving them enough to correct them. And that's the same love God does for us. He corrects us. He corrects me. He'll correct, he'll correct nations. He'll correct people. He'll correct families. Amen. That's what He does. Amen. He loves you. And if you don't know God tonight, guess what? He'll, he'll, I'm telling you, when I was lost, <laughs> amen, I was so miserable. The hand of God was heavy upon me. Everything I did seemed to blow apart. And I, I was just miserable. I was. But you know why? That wasn't because God hated me. It's because He loved me. He wants to see me saved. He wants to see me saved. So don't think everything's going to go bright for you. You know, people think, you think, well... I'm a, I must be, well, you need to check your life, but something ain't going right. You think, God doesn't love me anymore. <laughs> God can't help but love you. That's a lie. God is love. He might not like seeing in your life, but He still loves you. Uh, and everybody here, if you've got a child, if you've got a child, or if you ever think you might have one, I'm telling you, I guarantee you, no matter what that child does, you're not going to like everything that child does and says, but you're going to do something. You're going to continue to love that child. You're going to love that child all the day until you die. You're going to love that child. God loves you also. God loves you. And He's going to love you to the day you die. And I don't know about after that. He's going to judge you. So, amen. So God's love is present for you tonight. God's salvation is present because of Jesus Christ. Because God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. It is present for us tonight. It is present for healing of our life. It is present for, for forgiveness. It is present for leading and guiding us. It is present for, for lifting you up or tearing you down. Praise God. That's what God's love will do because he knows if you need the rain or if you need the sunshine. Praise God. Amen. He knows because he loves you. Praise God. And he's going to send exactly what you need because he loves you. Amen. Amen. Now, I ain't saying you don't bring stuff up on yourself because you do. But he still loves you <laughs> and he's going to correct you because he loves you. Amen? Because he loves you. But don't get caught up in this strong delusion. Believe the truth. Men have run to darkness, to lies. But the truth lies in the cover of this old Bible. Amen? In the word of God, the truth lies. He has given it to us. It's here. You don't have to walk in darkness. David, even King David, he didn't have to walk in darkness. He said, thy word is a lamp unto my feet. Right? Even back then, the Old Testament, amen, what he had was a lamp unto his feet. They, they, he said, there's, I don't know if I get this just right, but amen, there was a great light that appeared in the, in the valley of the shadow of death, something of that nature. And that great light is Jesus Christ. That he's the truth, he's the light. Amen. And, and we as Christians, or if somebody here doesn't know, amen, you, you've got to come to this truth. You've got to come to it. I, I can't make anybody. That's why God said that he would draw you into the truth. Amen. That truth is Jesus. He will draw him to your son, his son. That truth is Jesus. Amen. So this, this truth you've got to embrace for yourself. I had to embrace it. 
I had to embrace this truth. I couldn't continue to live in a lie as I believed in my own head or the world was spewing out, praise God. I had to learn to believe in the truth, praise God, that God created the heavens and the earth. God made everything. God is coming back. Amen. God has made heaven. God has made hell. And I will have to be judged by God. Amen. That's the truth of the word of God. Amen. And I want to stand in the, in the, in, under the blood of Jesus. Praise God. I want to be covered by the blood of the lamb. Amen. That's why John the Baptist said, amen. Look, behold, the lamb of God that cometh, amen, to, to take away the sins of the world. Praise God. Amen. That's who he's pointing to. Jesus. Amen. His cousin. Praise God. That's him right there. I'd come to that knowledge myself. That truth. And as soon as the Lord saved me, amen, he delivered me from the darkness. And now, thank God, I try my best to walk in the light, which is his truth of his word. And that's your choice. You're going to have to. And I see so many people blessed because they've chose to walk in the light, in the truth. I see their life blessed. I see it. I see my life blessed. I'm blessed. I'm a blessed man. I tell you, I am. Amen. I, I've got it. I've got it. everything I need. Amen. Yeah, I got the Spirit, the Holy Ghost. Amen. I've got a Savior. His name's Jesus. Amen. I've got a Father in heaven. I've got a home to go to. I'm not talking about here on, out on uh, uh, 32. I'm talking about a home in heaven to go to some great and glorious day. I've got a new body that's waiting on me. Praise God. Amen. I've got brothers and sisters that are already there. I've got an old, old mama that's there. Praise God. And grandmother. Amen. But most of all, I've got a Savior. Amen. That's there. Praise God. Amen. Yes, I'm blessed because my name is written in the book. Amen. Saved and born again bought by the blood. You're blessed if you are. And if you're not, you can be tonight. Amen. Amen. Because that's just the truth. <laughs> if you die lost, you're not going to heaven. That's just the truth. You'll spend eternity in a lake of fire in torment forever and ever. That's just the truth. You can walk in lies right now. Diane, would you come here? Please? You can walk in lies right now and believe, well, this all this is a big fairy tale. That's just your opinion and all this. But as soon as you close your eyes on this side, you're going to realize that this old gray-haired preacher was telling you the truth. If you don't wait till that day, you waited too long. There's no hope whatsoever. Today is the day of salvation. Now is the acceptable time. Right now. God knows your heart. God knows your life. Nothing hid from him. And he sent his son to save us. And he sent his son to keep us. What does he say? That which is, he's fully able to keep that which is committed to him. Amen. Have you committed it to him? Yeah. Amen. You need to commit your whole heart to him. Your whole life. Not part of it. Those who can, would you stand with us? If you can, come pray. Come pray. Come on. Come pray. If you need, come pray. Come pray for people here. Come pray for your loved ones or whatever. Amen. Come pray. Amen. This night. This night. Prayer. Prayer. And I know a lot of people have been praying. A lot of people have been praying for people. We're so glad you're here tonight. We are. We're glad you're here tonight. Amen. But Jesus wants to do a work in people's lives that only he can do. I can't do it. I can't do it in your life. But he can. He can. He's the one who made you. He's the one who made you. Come on. If you need to come pray, come on. Come on. Come on. I know this first night of the revival, officially. <laughs> We've been in church for a while, several nights in a row, so don't feel like the first night to me. So, so, but you mind the Lord tonight. Mind the Lord. Nobody gonna laugh at you. Nobody gonna make fun of you. Come on. Surrender it to the Lord. You haven't never experienced a love like this unless you be saved and born again. 
Haven't done it. No. Nope. For God so loved the world, He gave His only begotten Son for you. He gave Him for you. That you can have life and life more abundant. It's for you. It's all for you. He did it all for you. You either accept that gift or you reject it. I'm so glad that I accepted that gift of God because it is a gift. You can't work your way to it. Amen. You can't earn it. You can't buy it. It's a gift from God. Salvation is a gift. It's a free gift of God. It won't cost you, but it cost Him. Amen. Anybody else need to come? Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on, my friend. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Bless our brothers and sisters now. Bless, Lord. Bless, Lord. Anybody else? Come on. Come on. Come on. Amen. Never doubt that God loves you. Amen. Don't, don't do that. Don't doubt. God's love is there for you. And He is here to help you. He is trying to help you gain heaven. I mean, you don't die on a cross, amen, because you hate somebody. You love them. That's why Jesus stayed on the cross, because of His love for you. That's why He went through it, because of His love for you. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Anybody else? To tarry just for a moment more. Moment more. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Hey, we said we come here each night and we just, whatever the Lord blesses with, He blesses with. Amen. Uh, I've been in many, many, many revivals. I've seen them start off right off the bat strong and then kind of fade out at the end. But I've seen them start off slow. Man, they just, at the end, they just, God, they just got on fire. Amen. So uh, I thank God what He's doing tonight, what He did tonight. Amen. So. Amen. So, we want to invite you to come back and be with us tomorrow night. Look for a great time of the Lord. See what God has for us, right? Amen. And just keep praying. Keep praying. Right? Keep praying. Uh, so, we're not going to dismiss in prayer because we're just going to continue on, okay? So, uh, you come back tomorrow night. God bless you. Amen.